Well, people across the country are in for a cosmic tree as the solar eclipse will be visible across the U.S. next month. From coast to coast, people will see the moon slowly move in front of the sun, blocking some of the light in a partial eclipse, just like what you are seeing behind me. Joining me now is NASA expert Sarah Frazier to tell us a little bit more about how we can prepare for this exciting show. Sarah, thanks so much for joining us this morning. And so for people watching at home, how can you describe what will happen during this event? A solar eclipse is a really exciting way to see our place in the universe here on Earth. So for people who are outside the path of totality, but all across the contiguous U.S., you'll be able to see the moon move in front of the sun and create a crescent sun. So as long as you have your, your special eclipse glasses, you can look up in the sky and see that happening. And then if you are on that path of totality that goes from Texas up to Maine, you'll be able to see the moon completely block out the sun and see the sun's outer atmosphere, the corona. I mean, which is just so fascinating to be able to see. Now, we've been told to never look directly at the sun, and you kind of alluded to this earlier, but how can our viewers safely view the solar eclipse? So that's exactly right. You can never look directly at the uneclipsed or partially eclipsed sun because it's so bright and it can damage your eyes. So what you want to do if you can is get a pair of these eclipse glasses. These are usually paper glasses like this, and they have special lenses that filter out the light and protect your eyes. And you want to use those if you're seeing a partial eclipse um, or even if you're in the path of totality. Before totality happens, you want to use those glasses. Now, if you do travel to that path of totality, during the few moments of totality, you can take those glasses off and look directly at the eclipse because the sun's bright face is covered up. And, and if you don't have a pair of these glasses, you can use a, something like a pinhole projector to watch as well. Oh, okay. That's good to know. I know that when I, back in 2017, they were kind of giving them out. And speaking of the solar eclipse back in 2017, What's the difference between that solar eclipse and next month's? So this month's, next month's solar eclipse is going to be even more exciting. Uh, part of the reason for that is that the path of totality actually passes over more people. So it passes over more populated areas, and it's a wider path. Also, if you are in that path of totality, the period of the total eclipse is going to last longer in general than it did in 2017. It can last up to four and a half minutes, depending on where you are. And finally, we're actually the sun is actually in an active phase where it's releasing more activity. So you might be able to see the fingerprints of that solar activity in the solar corona during the period of totality. And one last question for you. Uh, I think this is just so fascinating, but what can scientists learn during and even while the eclipse is happening? Yeah, so the eclipse is a super great opportunity for scientists because we can see that atmosphere of the sun, because that's where all of that solar activity starts and travels outward uh, and creates the space weather that can affect Earth. So we can use the eclipse as an opportunity to take data on the sun's atmosphere that we can't get at any other time. So cool and fascinating. All right, where can viewers go to join in the fun in celebrating our star and prepare for the upcoming eclipse? You can learn more about everything we just talked about at go.nasa.gov slash eclipse 2024. Sarah, thank you so much for your time. Really great stuff, really great information. We look forward to next month, that's for certain. Guys, back to you.